Hey guys, Dan here, and in this video, we're gonna go over how to install a Whitestone Dome screen protector for your Galaxy S10, and then we're gonna test out that ultrasonic fingerprint scanner and see if it really works with this tempered glass screen protector on your phone. So if you've owned a Samsung phone recently, then you'll probably know that tempered glass screen protectors and the curved glass screen just does not work well together. Most screen protectors that you can get on Amazon, they don't even cover the entire phone screen. Or if they do, there's kind of this weird gap between the adhesive and the screen, and it just kind of makes it difficult to press on the screen and get things to respond as they normally would when there's no screen protector in the way. Whitestone Dome has been solving this issue for a little bit now and make a truly great product, especially for phones with curved glass screens. This video isn't sponsored by any means, but they did send out some screen protectors for me to try out. The screen protectors are a bit pricey, coming in at around $40 to $50, but having used these in the past, they are a quality product and they do a great job fitting your phone perfectly and covering the entire glass and making sure that everything works properly. All right, so installation of Whitestone Dome screen protectors is not my forte. I'm pretty bad at this because I just don't have proper patience. And usually I'm filming a video and just trying to get it on so that it works. Uh, so just make sure to take your time when applying the screen protector and read all of the instructions carefully before you start. You'll get those instructions inside the box, along with all of the supplies that you'll need, like a tray for the phone in order to hold everything in place, some cleaning cloths, alcohol wipes, dust stickers, and a sticker to cover the speaker grill at the top. There's also some adhesive tucked away inside of the trays, and of course, your screen protector, as well as a USB-powered UV light to cure the adhesive. Now, installing your screen protector is easy, but like I mentioned before, it does require patience and it's gonna take a little bit more patience if this is your first try. Power off your phone and then begin cleaning it with the wipes and the cloth and then remove some extra dust specks with those stickers. Place your phone inside the tray and maybe clean off some more dust. Then apply the sticker over the speaker grill and place the top cover over the tray. From here, there is a plastic bridge that locks these two trays in place. Simply place them inside the corresponding holes. Then place the pull tab through the top of the tray. I actually forgot about this step while filming, but it might be easier to put that pull tab in the top tray before locking it in place with the bridge piece. Next, you're gonna want to grab some adhesive and twist off the colored cap side first. Place it through the corresponding hole of the bridge and then twist off the other cap. This will go ahead and release the adhesive into a nice blob all over the phone. Once all the adhesive is out of the bottle, remove the adhesive and bridge and grab your screen protector. Go ahead and pull off the protective film and then place the screen protector on the phone. The pull tab will obviously prevent the protector from touching the top part of the phone. Go ahead and press down on the bottom part of the trays and let the adhesive run towards the middle. Once it hits your screen protector, remove the tab and let your screen protector sandwich the adhesive to the phone. This will take some time for it to spread throughout your phone, so just give it a couple of minutes. Once it's all done, grab a power bank, plug in the UV light, and cure the top and bottom half of the phone for around 15 to 20 seconds each. Take your phone out of the trays and give it another rub down with some of those alcohol pads to remove any excess glue. Then proceed to cure your protector again for another minute or two for both the top and bottom half. And after that, that's pretty much it. Your screen protector should be installed perfectly. There should be no bubbles or any dust specks. Now, of course, I had one tiny issue with my installation and it seems as if my table was a bit uneven and all of the glue sort of leaned to the left side. So when the adhesive started to spread, it didn't quite get the entire right side of the phone. And so that's why I have a few small bubbles towards the bottom. I do have an extra and I'll give it another shot later, but I didn't think it was worth scrapping the entire video for. Just know this was a user error. Everything else seems perfect and daily use of my phone Seems as if I don't have a screen protector on it whatsoever. Please note that you will need to delete and re-add your fingerprints to the phone with the protector installed. Once you do that, the phone and fingerprint sensor just works perfectly together. There shouldn't be any issues at all. For me, I've been having a few issues with my fingerprint sensor before I put this screen protector on, and so that any problems that you might see while I'm trying to register my fingerprint, uh, that's just because of my unit and it shouldn't be a common occurrence. Let me know if you plan to pick up a Whitestone Dome screen protector in the comment section down below, or if you have a cheaper alternative tempered glass screen protector for the S10 Plus, let me know in the comment section as well. 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one, please go ahead and do so. And as always, I will see you in the next one.